Control plus F nope. No nope thread. Nope. Nope thread. Not mine but classic nopes. Be 20 year old me. At girlfriend's house, I spent days at a time there sometimes. She has a quite weird bathroom. Doesn't look old, and she keeps it quite clean actually. Can hear people talking and yelling at each other when you're in there sometimes but in a muffled tone, can't understand anything. First encounter. Be smoking weed in her bathroom. Have bathroom fan on because of weed smoke and also makes it harder to hear me smoke, not allowed to smoke in the house but I always do in the bathroom and her mom never notices. It's 3 a.m. I hear a woman and a little girl arguing. Sounds like my girlfriend's mom and her little sister. Freak out cause I think they're awake and going to find out I'm smoking. Turn the bathroom fan off to hear better. Screaming stops, completely silent. Weird, but blame the sound of the fan making sounds that seem like yelling. Turn fan back on. Continue smoking. Few minutes later it happens again. It's even louder. Turn fan off. And it's silent again. Finish smoking in a hurry and leave the bathroom and back to my girlfriend's room. Ask her if she's ever heard random talking in her bathroom. She looks at me surprised and says oh my god yes. I thought I was crazy or something. Says she usually hears a man and a woman arguing when it happens. Says it only happens at night. Second encounter. Be late again, probably around the same time. Leave girlfriend's room to go piss. Walk in and push the door closed but it didn't close all the way and when it does it opens back up. Standing there taking a piss and out of the corner of my eye I see the door is opening back up cause I didn't close it all the way. Look over and start pushing the door closed. As I'm looking and closing, I notice a human-like shadowy arm was reaching in from the crack of the door at me. As the door is closing, it takes its arm out before it closes on it. Completely freaked out and notice I've pissed on myself because I wasn't paying attention because I was so scared. Reluctant to open that door, I wait in that bathroom for a minute or two, just listening, I haven't even flushed the toilet yet. I'm gonna have to leave eventually. Flush the toilet and as it's flushing, I hear a man yelling in muffled tone even louder than last time. Nope the hell out of there back to my girlfriend's room. Tell her about the shadowy arm. Tells me she sometimes sees a shadow man in the house. Tells me that one time she used the bathroom with the door open once and saw it staring at her. She freaked out and screamed at it to go away and it ran down the hallway. Said she's also seen it standing in the middle of her room before when she's walked by it and looked in. Says she's went to the crazy hospital for it and they say it's cause of stress and depression, it's making her hallucinate. I don't think she's hallucinating. Nothing too crazy has happened since other than hearing two people argue every once in a while at night. Still gives me creeps thinking about it all though. Became a slash K slash Amando because of this. Be me. Respond to an ad on Craigslist for a warehouse job. Only 5 miles from my house. Show up for interview at 9 a.m. Shadiest looking office I've ever seen, red flag number 1. Pace looked abandoned and smelled like wet dog. Receptionist was all tatted up and unprofessional looking. Three other guys for interviews, they all seemed to be on the slow side. Guy shows up, says he's Mr. Banks. Leads us into a conference room and says there is no warehouse job, red flag number two. Tells us it's a lucrative sales position, we'll make $600 a week. Asks for SSN and driver's license, red flag number three. Give a fake SSN but give him my license. Says we need to go to the bank to withdraw money for the paid training. Tells us to get in a van without windows with his two managers, bouncer looking guys. 
Say I'll just follow in my truck, he agrees. Consider leaving but decide to see it through. They drive to the outskirts of town into farmland, no banks around. Turn down a long road. Trees lining the road corm a canopy that blocks out sunlight. Turn on headlights. Alarm bells go off. Slam my brakes. Van stops, manager gets out. I can see a holstered gun under his jacket. Hit it in reverse and get back on a main road. Check Google Maps, nothing but dead ends in that area. Check Craig's list, post deleted. Tell cops, they say they'll look into it. I've carried my Glock 24 sevenths ever since. Be me about four years ago. Like going on midnight walks as I find it relaxing. Get this weird feeling before I head out so I grab my knife never know what'll happen. Head outside and make my way through my neighborhood. Start to notice is considerably darker outside than it usually is. Chalk it up to bad storm day before still cloudy some street lamps are out. Entire time I'm leaving my neighborhood can't shake this feeling of being followed. Decide to just turn up my music and keep going on. Make it to a street that's usually busy but hardly any cars. Bored with where I usually head to I decide to explore my GF at the Times Housing Edition. At this point I've completely forgotten about that feeling I got earlier. Casually walking downhill and checking out all the cool houses. Get to this cul-de-sac and see this huge old house straight down center. Head towards house to get a better look. As I approach I see the top story window is completely shattered. Getting a little closer I can only make out what appears to be a person standing perfectly still staring down at me. Get this cold shiver down my spine but try to brush it off as trying to see stuff that isn't there. Against better judgment and every horror movie ever made I get closer to the abandoned home. Getting closer and closer to the front door I didn't even notice the complete absence of any sound. Bear in mind I live in a well populated area so there's usually some ambient sound. Reaching the front door I can vaguely make out what looks like something crouched in the front room through the window next to the door. Being stupid and polite I go to knock on the front door. Before my fist can even make contact I hear the sound of someone walking on breaking glass from the upstairs window. That's when it happens. Try to abort knocking but can only slow it down before it lightly taps the door. The next few seconds are the most agonizing moments of my life. Begin to hear shifting and whispering. Trying to make out what's being said I lean my ear to the door. Then out of nowhere, Without any warning the most disturbing sound I've ever heard slowly emanates from the other side of the door. I can't even begin to describe what it sounded, like somewhere between a guttural moan to a scream. The creepiest thing about it was that it didn't carry across the neighborhood or echo in the walkway. Snapping from my trance I turned and ran back down towards the main part of the neighborhood. With each step I could hear that sound closely following me but I couldn't make out any footsteps. Halfway down the road it just stops. Not taking any chances I continued down till I got to the entrance of the cul-de-sac. Thinking it was finally safe I turned back to see if I was still being followed. Nothing is down the street and I can still make out the house this time at a safe distance. It's by this time that I notice the lack of any sound. Back then I did a lot of stupid things so it came as no surprise when I decided to head back towards the house. This time with knife in hand I cautiously walked to the house until I could again make out the person in the second story window. Feeling brave since I had my knife out this time I called out to the silhouette to see if it was even real or if I was just overreacting. As I call out asking if anyone's there and if they're okay it turns toward me. Getting a similar feeling as before I try to shake it and hold my ground. It's at this point that I'm pretty much locked in contact with whatever is in the window. Suddenly I hear walking coming from the back of the house and bring my gaze to the side of the house. There on the other side of the fence is someone clearly taller than the fence itself. 
making sure I don't get surprised I quickly move my gaze to the window again and nothing. When I say nothing I should clarify that it was more the absence of any light. It was like staring into a black hole and just watching light disappear into that window. Hearing walking again I turned my attention to the figure on the other side of the fence. This thing whatever it was I could clearly make out despite it being way too dark to make out any features. It was roughly six foot as it was taller than the fence. Looked like your average person but something was off about it. Like uncanny valley type of off there was just something I couldn't place but whatever it was, it was making me more and more uneasy as I looked at it. Trying to be as quiet as possibly I tried to get closer to the fence. Unfortunately just as I had gotten with about 10 feet of the fence I stepped on a few dead leaves and with anything it happened to be the loudest sound possible. Frozen in place, the thing on the other side stopped and slowly turned to me. Fear now taking hold of my being I had hoped staying perfectly still would lessen the chance of it noticing me. Perfectly still just as I was it cocked its head like a puppy and just stared at me. As you can imagine I had quite a fearful panicked look on my face and didn't want to move till I was certain it no longer was paying me any mind. A few seconds passed and it slowly uncocked its head and stared at me. And that's when I noticed it. Its face. It no longer looked inquisitive or calm. It wore the same expression I wore only mine was truly afraid. It began to convulse and change its expression to more closely match mine. As I watched it look more and more like me with each second, I was done. I wanted out of there and if there was any opportunity of me getting out of there it was now while it was doing whatever the hell that was. Inching backwards till I was at a safe distance to run it stopped moving it looked at me. Thinking I had stopped just in time for it not to notice it cocks its head one more time. At this point I can't take any more this and start to run. Before I can turn the other way and run to safety it begins its sprint after me. Thinking I'll have a few seconds for it to climb the fence I quickly turn around till I hear it scream. Coming to halt I make the mistake of looking back to see it walk through the fence. Not power through the fence leaving it in shambles. No. This thing just phases through the fence at full speed. With no more time to spare I ran. I ran for what felt like ages. Not stopping till I was at the one of the entrances to my neighborhood. Feeling somewhat safe I decided to stop and catch my breath. I could finally make out my house down the street. Taking one last opportunity to see if I was being followed I turned back. The only thing I can make out in the darkness is a black shadowy shape crawling towards me on the ground. Needless to say I ran all the way back to my house and locked all the doors and windows. To this day I have no idea what it was that I saw or heard. I went back a few weeks during the day to pick up my GF and she could see I was shaken about something. I never told her and only my closest friends know what happened that night. Posted this one before but will post it for bumping more nope. I had recurring dreams. Be me, probably five. Always have this same dream. Always a clown chasing me around taunting me. Looks exactly like the clown from it. Only looks the same with the same voice, but is not like clown in book. Appears frequently in dreams. Watching me and taunting me. Always appears when I'm with my family. For example, if I was in a yard playing with my brother the clown might be on a neighbor's porch watching. Watching and yelling and taunting. Never is noticed by family. The dreams get worse as they go on because my family always would find excuses to leave. Anon, well be right back. Wait here. Every time they left the clown would come hurt me. One day, I decide I've had enough of this crap. In this particular dream the clown is on Ant's porch. Just sitting there, like a doll. I know he is watching me, but no one believes me. We are inside, I know the clown is waiting. Mom. The clown is there. Please help. 
Okay, Anon. Calm down. Let's defeat him together. Hell yes. JPG. We start to head outside to the porch to get to the clown. I walk through the door first. Mom closes and locks the door, leaving me outside with the clown. WTF mom. Jif. Can't believe my mom would do this to me, I feel so sad. Enough, I know it's time. The clown is here. I look towards the chair the clown was sitting in. The clown is gone. The chair is rocking. He's out here. I look and eventually he shows himself. I lunge at him. Damn you clown. I start screaming at him, and punching him. Somehow get in bulldozer and run him over. He is incapacitated on the ground. I jump on him and keep punching him over and over. I yell at him, punching. He isn't moving anymore. One final punch and he disappears, all I'm punching is the mud now. The clown is gone forever. And ever since I've never had the clown reappear in any of my dreams or nightmares. Walking along the highway out of town in the middle of the night. No street lights, rural area, but it was a full moon so plenty of visibility. No reason to be concerned. Get about a mile out of town, about halfway to the farming area I was walking to. Super aroused, made up my mind to screw a mare. Head down a side road, where I knew an old couple owned a stable with no security. Stands of trees along the side of the road, some tall enough to block out the moon. Suddenly, starts to rain. Pouring. Everything goes black. Looking up, can't even see the sky. Total darkness. Can't hear anything except the rain. Keep carefully picking my way along the road, using my feet to feel where the concrete ends. Out of nowhere, hear something new. Wood cracking in the floor to my left. Freeze. Make no movements, silent breathing, straining to hear through the rain. Whatever it is is big. Probably within 25 feet. Destination is close, but now pretty scared. This cougar territory. Stay still, hope it will go away. Noise stops. Beast is waiting. Silent showdown in the middle of nowhere, not even the moon bears witness. Suddenly, noise resumes. Coming closer. I'm out. Turn around and bolt. Still blind and deaf from the rain. Fleeing in a panic with no light, can't even hear my own footsteps. Doesn't matter. Crashing still behind me. Run for hours or so, finally see the light of town ahead of me. Keep running. Too breathless to scream. About to reach the first street lights, but I stumble. Go down hard. Noise behind me. Look back, expecting to see the eyes of Asmodeus staring back from oblivion. Nope.jpg. It was that damn horse all along. B September last year. Finally got a new working TV in my room, no more sitting at the comp watching movies. Make my way to the study to download some new movies onto a USB because I'm a laptopless pleb. While shit's copying onto USB I get distracted by some crap on the TV. Suddenly start hearing something banging around slash stuff being dragged around my room. Notice.jpg Slowly walk towards my room, shaking pretty hard because I'm freaked out as all fuck. Thought someone had broken into my room somehow and was in the process of stealing my shit and then killing me, which I wasn't in the mood for. Still slowly walking towards my room, can see the light shining beneath the door. Suddenly see something walk past the door from under the gap. Naman. Go drag brother out of bed and kick him into my room to check for demons slash serial killers. Nothing there, nothing damaged, couldn't have been broken into. 
didn't sleep in my bedroom for two days after because fuck that. Finally decide to go back into sleep and find nothing had been moved or damaged except my Xbox, which was on the floor. Ghost fucker tried to steal my Xbox. What an asshole. Be browsing slash x slash. Hear a bonk. Investigate. Sklington pops out. Scared. Nope. Okay, a bit of preface. The USNS Mercy is a hospital ship that is a part of Merchant Mariner Corps. It is a combined duty post between Merchant Mariners and Navy personnel and it tours the Pacific when making its rounds. As a hospital ship it cares for the sick and dying around the Pacific. You can find more about the ship in general at its Wikipedia link. Be security guard on Night Watch 1900 PO2, Petty Officer Second Class, yeah this ship goes on tours all the time in the Pacific. Me, so you help out locals with medical stuff? PO2, we cruise around the Philippines and other Southeast Asian countries doing humanitarian efforts. Just about everyone who's been here for about three months gets the humanitarian service ribbon. Me, which is PO2, anything we can help with. Food, medical supplies, surgery, you name it we try to help. We've had our share of people die on the ship though. You can't save them all but you gotta try man. One life saved is better than no life saved. Me, you like serving on this ship? Most of the other crew don't like it much. PO2, I may be working in the engine all the time but this ship has the best mission in my opinion. We help people. It's a shame I got shore duty soon. I am definitely going to try and get retransferred back on this ship. Me, well hammer down I guess. You're the most motivated person I've seen on here. PO2, you haven't seen some of the doctors. They also love their job here. Well except for one, but he's getting transferred out soon, so who gives a shit? Me, Aon Roger. PO2, oh, hey it's 0100. Time for fire watch rounds. Me, ye, time to earn my paycheck. Continue in next post. Continued. This is a relatively big ship. Surprisingly spacious but then again it needs to be for being a hospital ship. I'm mostly looking for water leaks, potential fires, puddles, what have you. As I was making my rounds I was getting a slight feeling I was being watched. I could tell though that nobody was around me because most of the ship's crew was on shore at a hotel. I'm meandering around and everything's okay. I skitter back to the gangway entrance. PO2, all good? Me, yup. Nothing wrong. Later that watch. PO2, hey, it's 0400. Time for your rounds again. I was on this round again and I had the same feeling. Like someone was watching me. My hair was going full goosebumps. I was approaching the med bay when I heard a click inside. When I walked inside I saw the back of a little child run through into another room. I marched on afterwards going the fuck. I entered into the next area and it was a dead end and empty of life. Dumbfounded I decided to look about. Nothing. I returned into the med bay and looked about once more. Nothing. I sigh and think my paranoia is kicking off. I exit back to the main hall when I heard a whisper in my ear. Tag. You're it. Nope right back to the gangway. PO2, you okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Taking nap after work. Realize I'm waking up before I wake up. Hear voice in my head watch out. Snap awake. Box fan turns on and falls off the end table. Hear my door shut but don't see it happen. Nope all the way to the living room. 
Open all curtains and live in the shield of protective light for three hours. B16. Live in middle of butt fuck nowhere. Have a cat that likes to go outside sometimes. Surrounded by woods, so lots of wild animals. Coyote howls right by window. Shit pants because that's a creepy noise to hear at 2 a.m. Hear a cat screeching like it's being slaughtered. Realize my cat, Marvin, is outside. Freak out because my poor feline. Dumb alpha moment, decide to save my cat. Race outside in boxers. See eyes in the woods. Oh, hear kitty kitty. Walk closer to eyes. Come air baby, it's okay. Hear noise in trees. Look up. Marvin. But if Marvin's in the tree, WTF am I calling and walking towards? Nope.jpg Feel like an imbecile because I've been walking towards a super pissed off coyote. Walk to tree because apparently cats matter more than my own personal safety. He jumps down and I have to try and get him to come over to me because he's terrified. Finally get him, start walking towards house. Coyote stands up and starts coming closer. Gets ready to lunge. Nope 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 nope. Made it just in time to my place. House circled by coyotes for the next few days. B11. Drawing people because little art nerd. Gets super great idea for a girl. Draws her and instantly names her Amanda. Is proud of drawing. Shows mother. Mother cries and freaks out. What's wrong, mum? Tells me about a spirit she encountered with a Ouija board when she was younger. Spirit's name is Amanda. Followed her wherever she went until mum's brothers burnt all of her occult stuff. My drawing of Amanda looks exactly like spirit Amanda. Freak out. Mum makes me burn the drawing at a church in the middle of the night. Couple of years ago, still living at my parents' house. Parents getting ready to go out to the football, waiting on my sisters to come pick them up. Not a big fan of going to sporting events so stay home. About five minutes after they leave, my dog starts going nuts outside. Go out, look around, find nothing. Grab my dog in her bed and put her in the computer room with me. At one point I look at her and she is staring at the door, head tilted. Look out door into corridor, see nothing. Suddenly hear a sound like someone has broken out into a sprint from the living room, the far end of the house, to the front door and hear the front door slam. Saw a shadow go by the corridor entrance as the sound happened. Grab my dog who is now going ape shit. Run out the back door jump the fence and head to a friend's house not too far away. Call my parents slash sisters asking if someone forgot something and quickly ran inside to get it and left in a hurry. No such luck. Call the police, no signs of forced entry anywhere. Nothing stolen. Demand my parents have the locks in the house changed. To this day, no idea what the fuck happened but never had a situation like that ever again from when I was still living there. I have one, I don't know if it can be attributed to spooks or not though. At girlfriend's house, sitting on her bed. On the side of the room with the door, only open air around me. She's on the computer on the other side of the room. Hear a voice whisper directly into my ear. Where is my mom? Look up, startled, nothing around me moving, GF hasn't turned around, room is silent. After a moment's thought attributed to her little brother, whose room is across the hall. She looks confused when I tell her her brother's looking for their mom. Hey younger brother, did you just ask for mom? He says no. Have trouble sleeping there that night overwhelming feeling that someone is standing over me next to her bed. Wake up next morning, watched sensation is gone, 
never speak of it again. I've never had strong feelings about ghosts or spirits existing in our world one way or the other, being an if I see it I'll believe it kind of person, but I definitely can't explain why I heard such a distinct voice so close to my ear when there was nothing around to cause it. It's not on the level of seeing slash confronting anything, but it was still pretty weird. Don't remember exactly but it started when I was 4 or 5 years old. My house has a long corridor, it has three rooms on the left and other where it ends, and I dreamed a thousand times about a shadow coming out my father's room, the third one, and coming after me. I also dreamed about me coming out the room door and some hands don't letting me out. I don't know how it started, if the first thing were the dreams or fear in real life, but every day, even with sun and light in the house, I had to run over the corridor, my room was the last on the corridor in that time. Later I changed room because one brother left the house and was the first room on the corridor, and still I had to run sometimes to go in or get out. Later I changed again and returned to my room. I stopped doing it at 12 years old or so, but I kept doing it sometimes, now I'm 21 years old and when it's dark I have to run over it sometimes. One night I almost had a heart attack, I was quiet and walking but I felt it on my back and nope nope nope, I started running, I almost cry. This was the only time I felt the shadows so close to me, but there were many other times when I looked back and felt like I was seeing the shadow coming out the third room. Sure it's just that I'm easy to scare, but it's still rare. It's not fear of the dark, that ever happened with the lights on. If I'm in my room I can stay in the dark perfectly, not like other people with fear of the dark that can't do that. I don't fucking know where this fear come out, but I'm sure it's only a fear. Eh, I think I'll go with one of my less nopeier nopes, move on through my pile, and go for the night. Nope 1. I turned 19 about two months before this happened, living in the place next door to my family's home, which they bought. About two in the morning I'm sitting around, playing the video. Hear the downstairs door open. Shout hello. Thinking it was my mom with something important. Nothing. Hear footsteps on the stairs, thump, thump, thump. I grab my .22 rifle and just wait in my doorway. Thump, thump, thump. Nothing, goes on for 10 minutes. Fuck it. I check the stairs, go downstairs, check every room, relock all the doors. Nothing to be found. Fast forward to next day. 8 p.m., changing the light fixture in my bedroom, dad is with me, he's an electrician, need someone with experience for it at times, same shit happens. Dad looks at me and says did you hear that? I tell him I did, and we both yell hello, nothing, this time it's twice the footsteps, like two people are coming upstairs. He grabs the point two two. I grab up a crowbar, sweep, and clear. Nothing again. We both noped the fuck out and called my mother, she came over all freaked out too, turns out. Shit was happened at my folks house too. Next up is from when I was younger and lived in my folks house. Is there anything more you can elaborate on? That's fucked up. I used to live in a town that burned down for the most part in the early 1900s, some fire started up in a paint store and just obliterated the town. So there's always been creepy shit happening, local legends, folklore, shit like that. At my parents' house that day, the doors kept opening, and the cats were going ballistic, climbing the curtains, door frames, hiding in the cabinets. We've had the shadow people in that home, the giggling kids. Seen an old dude standing on the upstairs landing. Had one of those heavy ass upright mirrors just topple over and here get out. Just all around fucked up shit in the house. No Indian burial ground bullshit a fake. Only one person died in the house, 
40 years before my folks bought it. We've also had black dogs just bark at the house, ceaselessly at night for weeks on end before family has died. Been trying to convince my family to move out of that shit for a great while now though. Dad refuses, mom's up for it. Nope too. I have more than three, some shit I chose to omit, but I'll put my nopes in a basket for you. Bout 12, chilling upstairs playing a card game with my mom called bullshit. Only have one sibling at the time, three months old, with us upstairs. Hear jingling and giggling from downstairs. Hear kids saying mommy and shit like that. Hear woman's voice. Mom went downstairs to figure out what the fuck was going on, there was nothing. Just four numbers, written on the ceiling. 1749. Shit wasn't there before, shit's still there ten years later, and four paintings later. We still haven't told my dad about it, he's a bit of a pussy. Gonna go with the gobbler. I was 18 at the time, about 1 a.m., EST. All times in my posts are EST, chilling in my parents' living room, doing the usual nightly shit, vidya, porn, you name it. It just stopped raining so I had the windows open for that delicious fresh air. Hear a clattering noise out on the street, noise like a couple chickens. The fuck dot jpg. Nothing's out there, looking all around out the windows for the source of the noise, nothing. Clucking gets loud, I mean hella loud, like you're inside a chicken warehouse or some shit. Rumbling gets loud enough to vibrate the windows. Jump out onto the front porch, look up and down the street, ain't shit. Gobbling stopped. Went back in, locked the doors, went back to Vidya. It fucking starts again, there's nothing outside, nothing in the house. Mom comes downstairs the fuck are you watching? I can hear it upstairs. MFW I ain't got shit loaded. HFW the gobbling stops in front of the church. Nope right the fuck to sleep after that. I don't want no ghost chickens avenging their fallen comrades. One of the local legends I mentioned, this one goes by the name of Stovepipe so it'll require some backstory. Out in the town I used to live in, there's a steep-ass twisty road called Horseshoe Bend, given its name because, you guessed it, it's shaped like a horseshoe, according to legend, a man was taking a carriage up the hill when he fell off and had his head cut off by one of the wheels, I'm only relaying the story, he rolled down the hill and had gotten a stove pipe, metal pipe normally attached to wood-burning stoves, lodged around his neck. As the legend goes, if you go to the turn's apex at the bend, and yell stovepipe stovepipe I got your head he'll come out of the woods and get you. Har har, spooky story and shit, I kr. I was 14, coming home late from the movies with a friend, about 9am, and the car breaks down right at the bend, no biggie, only a short distance walk home. So I figure. Why not put the legend to the test? I get out at the apex, right at the border of the woods and shout stovepipe stovepipe got your head. At first, nothing happened. I figured, yeah, typical myth, bullshit, yada yada. Then there comes a crashing noise in the woods, like something big moving in there. Trees near the road were shaking, I couldn't see anything out there. It got louder and closer, and an orange light about 15 feet or so from the roads popped into sight, the noise got louder and louder as the light got closer. I pussied out, jumped back into the car and we just coasted it home. My last big nope story happened about a week before I left my home state for Colorado, possibly for good, not sure yet. A whole day of nopes. Families out on vodka left me behind to watch the house and pets. Get up at 8 a.m. due to cats being assholes. Head downstairs and notice one of the doors are open a bit. Oh well, I probably forgot to close it. No big deal. 
close and lock the door and head into the kitchen, sit down and realize the seat's warm, like someone's been sitting on it. Figure must have been the cat's. Go on with my day, hearing the normal thumps and groans of a home, thought nothing of it, sit back in a chair and see someone looking at me from the doorway, I blink and they're gone. Doors and windows are still shut and locked tight, didn't hear any footsteps. Shadow crosses the doorway. Start getting a bit worried. Door to the back porch opens. Locks just disengaged, nobody on the planet has a key to that door. Slam it shut, pile some shit against it to barricade. Shit's going on outside the window, shadows passing, knocking, scratching on the glass, just bypassing the screen entirely. Call local church, right across the street, ask the pastor if he can stop by, tell him spooky shit's going on down here. Pastor shows up, everything stops, he just shrugs his ass out of there and it all starts up again. Think I'm getting fucked with by some heavy shit. Put on headphones, decide to sit this shit out for the day. It ends after six hours, I wait an extra two to make sure I'm not being duped by whatever it is. Nothing. I go outside, feed the cats, make sure the yard's not full of trash, etc. The fuck dot jiff. Someone's in the shed, I can see the light on. Shadow passing the window, etc. Go up to shed, armed with a shovel. Open door slowly. Nobody there. Leave door open and go back to the porch. Door slams. Nope 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 dot png. Stayed in the house rest of the day, watched movies, blasted music. I don't want no ghost chickens avenging their fallen comrades. Fucking keck. My family always have been involved with weird stories, but there's one that creeps me the fuck out because I was there. Be me, around 11 to 12 years old. It's Christmas, and since I live in a tropical country, Brazil, it's really hot on Christmas. Whole family decides to go to the coast because why the fuck not? We decided to stay at a great uncle's house, it was pretty big and really old. Now let me put some backstory here, my father's cousin would usually come here with her friends to do weird rituals, mess with the supernatural and stuff, and according to my aunt, she told them she'd usually do said rituals and after them she'd wash her feet to get clean of her sins of some shit like that. My sister, who's actually my cousin, but I consider her my sister since we were created together, my aunt and me, to this day, except that the weird shit that happened on that weekend was because of this cousin of my father, but anyway. It was the second night, the first one was weird as shit too, but I'll tell it after I tell this one. The house, as I said, was old, so weird house sounds were normal, except that at this night it was all in complete silence. I was sleeping in the same room as my aunt and my dad on the second floor, and on the first were my sister, my older cousin and her boyfriend, in another room were supposed to be one of my uncles and his wife, but only my younger aunt and her daughter and husband were there. Now this is where it gets weird. I was asleep, but I heard someone scream and jumped out of bed, followed my aunt to my cousin's room and stayed on the door while everyone was on the room trying to calm my sister, cousin, and her boyfriend. They were freaking the fuck out, telling everyone that somebody was on the door, that had big legs and no life on its eyes, and that ran through the house when they screamed. I was really tired at this moment, I said to myself Nat, they were just dreaming, and decided to go back to my room. That's when I look at the window and froze. This fucking guy, looking directly at me, with what I can only describe as the same lifeless eyes my sister and my cousin were talking about. He had a puzzled look, like I was the weirdest thing on the room. I tried to speak but I couldn't, it just didn't come out of my mouth. When I realized it was opening its mouth as I was trying to open mine, 
and that everyone was getting out of the room to go to their respective bedrooms, I ran like my life depended on it. I got to my room and light really just fell on my bed, like that trust game. Now this is where I think this goes to the well this is weird as fuck status. I woke up as soon as I hit the pillow. I asked my aunt who was coming back to the room what the hell happened and she tells me that the guys from the first floor had a nightmare, nothing to worry about. I shrug it off and go back to sleep. Now before you guys go oh you were dreaming, I think that too, but my sister told me what happened in the morning and it was everything exactly as I remember it, and when I told everyone what I thought I saw through the window, everyone that apparently saw it too froze like they've just seen it again. Also, no one ever saw me waking up or going to the room or something like that, and my father swears to me that I was asleep the whole night. That night wasn't even the only weird shit that happened in that house, my uncle fell from the porch in the first day and broke his clavicle just as he was saying that my father's cousin was a bitch and a satanist, my younger aunt literally saved her baby from this biggest trophy that would have fell in her if my aunt hadn't woke up from someone whispering help her. Oh, and of course the gigglings and the sounds of a group washing their feet on the kitchen. At 3 a.m. Be around 12. Staying at friend's house. Time to go to bed, says you can sleep in the room next to the garage. It's the only room on that side of the house, so it's creepy regardless. Say okay but still a little scared, because you know. Fucking stupid me agrees to watch a horror movie before bed. Makes walking to the bathroom scary as fuck. Piss before bed, friend says goodnight and heads to his room. Hesitantly walk to the room next to the garage, kinda was used as a study. Lie down and drift off to sleep. Feel a weight on the bed, nothing too extreme just enough to be noticeable. Fucking scared now, sit up, to this day I'm not sure whether it was in my head or it wasn't, I just hear this fucking non-human get out. Fucking get of there pronto. Wake friend up and ask to go home. Ring parents, eventually find out his home previously was home to a angry war vet. Nope. I suppose I will share one of my stories too. Dush fog here, excuse shitty English, just moved to America recently. Moved to new apartment in country area some time ago. Had been in it for some days, week maybe. Lying in bed late at night listening to trees blow in the wind. Relaxing and chill, drifting off to sleep. Sleeping have a dream of a tall, dark figure standing in my hallway staring at me. Suddenly, I do not know how to explain it, sort of like a gunshot sound from kitchen. Jet awake and look towards my door. Break in maybe? Grab my knife and sneak, out bedroom door slowly. Look through kitchen and living room. Empty. Turn back to go back to my bed. See a tall, dark shadow just out of sight move to bedroom. Hear somewhat a gasp I suppose? A quick heavy breathe of sort. Jet awake again, seemed to be a dream in a dream. Notice knife sitting on my table next to my bed, not in the table where I always keep it. This happens regularly, but with my new job I sleep at day and leave a little after night, so I don't experience it anymore. I've got a bit of a short nope story. I'm still not sure of what to make of it. Be living in a small town in the Wisconsin Fox Valley. Nothing to do in the valley besides get drunk or high. Me and a friend, let's call him Marcus, decide to walk around in the middle of the night. Nothing interesting goes on while we walk around, just chatting about things like guns and D&D. We reach the outskirts of town in no time. Start heading down a county road that loops back to another part of town. Road leads past some suburbs, some businesses, and a quarry. As we walk I get the feeling something is off. Cars pass us every now and then but they're far and few between. 
can't shake the feeling and our conversation dies off. As we reach the stretch of road in front of the quarry it becomes aware to us that there's no street lights on our side. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that the quarry was also on our side. The quarry itself is surrounded by chain-link fence about seven feet high and hasn't seen much use in the past years. Regardless of the circumstance, we kept walking forward in silence. After maybe 30 seconds of walking past the fence something strange happens. A blood-curdling sound comes from the quarry. A scream somewhere between a rabbit and a woman. Whatever made the sound must have been either dying or having its intestines ripped out. Looking over at Marcus, it's like he didn't hear it, as he kept walking. I motion for him to stop and listen and he does. Not even five seconds after I heard the sound. Another scream, same volume but slightly different in pitch. We both share a look of, you heard that too right? He asks me if we're going to turn around and do something about it. Fuck that shit. We both turn and keep walking along the road. It took us about five minutes to get past the quarry. The entire time punctuated by the scream every few seconds. After we get out of earshot of the quarry the mood begins to lighten up. We joke about making a call of Tholo campaign about it. The rest of the night is uneventful, although I've yet to walk past the quarry at night since. I can't help but wonder what the hell was making that noise. It was higher in pitch than an average woman but still human-like. The sound was truly like someone was getting murdered, but repeatedly. If it was dying, why did it last for over five minutes? If it wasn't dying, why was it screaming over and over again? I don't think it was a recording either because each scream was different from the last. It had slight changes in pitch, volume, and length each time. Any thoughts slash x slash? Be three years ago, Christmas Eve. Spending the evening with my side of the family with husband. At grandparents, my childhood home, never liked the place. They're out of obligation, these people are not good people. Same passive-aggressive slash slightly unnerving plastic behavior all night. Grandmother wants us to go upstairs to see the rooms, which have not changed since I lived there. People finally start going home. Grandmother still pestering us to go check out the upstairs. Everyone is gone now except for mother, grandparents, my husband, and I. Grandmother really wants us to head upstairs. Husband and I check out the upstairs alone, everyone else stays downstairs. Chatting as we go from room to room, nothing changed much in any of them. Get to grandfather's upstairs office. Overwhelming smell of decay. Not like grocery meat, but the distinct smell of a whole animal or body. Meat, innards, bowels, etc. Nothing small something at least medium dog-sized, judging from experience via friends into taxidermy. We continue conversation normally to not make a scene while we carefully look around. Nothing. Loading nope.exe. We head downstairs after our two-minute tour, keeping casual as though nothing is wrong, still chatting, but I'm intent upon bringing up the smell. We immediately find all three of them, mom and grandparents, standing very quiet and very still, staring up the staircase. Remembering the look in their eyes, it almost looked as though they were trying to read us for something. Looked pretty damned malicious. Recall how bad grandmother wanted us to go upstairs. All three go into immediate plastic mode, like nothing happened. Nope D straight out of there, never bring up the smell. Ended up being the last straw situation that finally drove me to cut off contact with them, haven't spoken to them since. Fuck it, this seems like the right place to tell my story. Be me, 8 or 9 years of age, living in New Zealand. Me, my dad, and my brothers went to a water park and stayed in a little ass motel. 
We stayed about one night and we were checking out, I notice a door with a window that lead to behind the motel. I heard rubbish bins being tossed around or some shit. Then when the noises stopped, I saw the silhouette of a large bear looking thing walking off making a wet growling noise. I gave no shits, considering I was only eight, and forgot about it. Fast forward two years later, I was staying with my aunt in Rotorua. Had to sleep in the guest room. As I laid on the bed, I started to feel very heavy and overwhelmed. I saw the same bear looking shape walking past my room from two years ago. I start to feel very panicky. Everything in the room start to look and feel larger. All over my body, I felt like like tiny pin sized 100 kilo weight were pushing me down into my bed. Then I noticed that the bear was gone. The room no longer seems so overwhelming. I feel the invisible weight dissipate. After a few minutes, I went to sleep. In the morning, as I ate wheat bix with honey, which is pretty much oral sex in taste, fucking love those things, I asked my auntie if she has seen any bears or anything around her house. She say no, shut up, eat your breakfast. Fucking bitch still love you though. Jif. Also, there aren't really any bears in New Zealand. I live in the US now, and nothing like this has happened since. Most likely just a dumbass kid's imagination. I have seen threads on slash x slash about shadow people and dreaming as you're awaking. That might be a good explanation. Sounds like a shit creepy pasta now that I typed it down. Anything like this happened to any of you guys? Not exactly a nope thread but gonna contribute anyways. B6 to 7 at grandma's house with mom. Grandma was ill and passed away a few days later. Have to stay longer so that my mom can handle the funeral and stuff. It was just me and my mom. A day after the funeral me and my mom sleeping on same bed, grandma's old bed. Asleep, middle of the night hear a soft thud. Think nothing of it till I hear it again a bit louder. Coming from the kitchen. Third time. It was the sounds of the fridge door being opened and closed. Ask my mom what that noise is. She just looks at me smiles and says. Don't worry son, that's your grandma paying us a visit. At this point I knew how death worked, people don't come back after death. Too spooky for me, close my eyes and try to go back to sleep. Hear thud again, twist my head to see direction of the kitchen, everything is dark for a few seconds then what is unmistakably the fridge light shines briefly before a final thud. I wished I could nope out of there. But mom kept me safe. B19 Living in old house. Moved in roughly three months prior. Penis penis penis. Sorry suffer from Tourette's. Had choice of tiny ass room or all basement. Shoulda taken room. Nibber fuck pussy pussy. Headboard of bed against cement wall. Couldn't sleep one night. Small amount of light coming in from windows so basement isn't pitch black. Ass cat fuck whore butter. Staring into darkness on other side. Think I see something move out from behind furnace. Big shadow, broad shoulders, long bull horns. Steps into view and looks right at me or so I imagine since no face discernible. Nope nope fucking nope haul ass out of there and up to the second floor where everyone else is. Stay awake waiting to see if it followed. Sleep on sofa for weeks until told to sleep in my room. Change position of bed to its up against wall so I can face away from the other side. Basement light on at all time I'm there. Move out shortly after. Told rumors about people murdered in basement there. Fuck. Oh and cock knocker pizza dick anus nipple. This happened a few days ago. Live in a rural outback town. About to move out, living with parents. 7 p.m. 
walk downstairs to talk to mum about something. Heard screen front door close so I assumed she was back from shops. Heard back sliding door open. Walk downstairs, back sliding door opened about one fourth of the way. Can't find her. Go to sliding screen door look out towards the backyard. Think I can see her. Assume she's locking up chickens because no flashlight is where it's kept. Walk outside without turning on the patio light. Walk to chicken cage that's a few hundred meters away from the house. I'm following a silhouette so still assume it's my mother. Mum walks inside the door of the chicken coop that was already opened. I stand at the door and start talking about whatever it was. Hear grunting, thinking mum's hurt I ask mum, are you okay? Need a hand. Take a step into the chicken coop as I say it. Hear back I'm not your mother. Male voice, kind of accented which threw me off. Brain takes a moment to function. Sprint past my house straight up to the driveway, which is near a highway. Wait there, back facing road staring down my driveway waiting for the random person to get me. Mum pulls up. What are you doing Ash? No bout, Mum convinces me to go back inside the house. Lock all the doors. Call police. They come can't find anyone. I had my father check everywhere when he came home. It worries me how I assumed it was my mother and just followed him over to the chicken coop. Not scary or nope worthy but I have something similar that belongs on slash x slash. Live in a fairly isolated house most of my youth with a big field stretching out before a small wooded area beyond my backyard, on the outskirts of town. Have an Egyptian Mao cat for several years that I loved dearly, she always cuddled up to me at night and was very sweet. Often played with our dog in the backyard, and sometimes I swear she would purposefully wake me when I would have bad dreams. She got me through many tough times growing up, and it wasn't easy to leave her when heading off to college. Still visit frequently and bring her little mouse toys and such on breaks. One winter break I come home to bad news. We didn't want to tell you before coming home. So you wouldn't drive upset. But cat has gone missing. Apparently several cats in the area have too, they think it's a coyote doing it. Don't really react at the time but I'm unbelievably upset. And angry. Not too many nights later I'm awakened by a mocking howl outside. Start to sit on the back porch each night for hours with my dad's rifle and with our dog. One night the dog tenses up suddenly, soon I can hear something near the back fence. Flick on very bright yard lights, and sure enough it's a coyote. Immediately shoulder the gun and fire at it. It makes a kind of pathetic sound and starts to run off. I chase after it in a haze of primal hatred, vaulting over the fence. I didn't want to kill it for the typical human reasons not for food, or for fur, or for bothering my herd, or being a nuisance or threat to me. I wanted to kill it because I hated it, because it took my friend away. I had definitely hit it with the first shot and it didn't get that far. I found it curled up and already dead near some huge rocks in the field. It was a particularly warm and muggy Texas night and I, drenched collapsed to the ground and suddenly start to cry. My sadness turns to a flash of anger and I start to beat the shit out of the thing's corpse with the butt of the rifle and yelling. I would have definitely seemed crazy had anyone been out there to see it, now somewhat muddy and screaming and jamming life's melee button on a dead animal. Suddenly feel impelled to look to my right, and there on the ground just two or three feet away I see a small mouse toy. I picked it up and found it was the kind that makes the little chirping sound when you shake or throw it. Despite being on the damp ground in the middle of the field it looks brand new and is brightly colored. Strange that I missed it before. Holding it I felt very calm and the air now seemed pleasantly cool. I take back one of the smaller stones from that spot, along with the toy. 
I bury the toy in the backyard with the stone as a marker, with her name on it. Sometimes when I visit my parents and sleep in my old room, as I'm just about to fall asleep I can hear a faint purring sound. I've never really had any paranormal encounters unless this counts. I've always felt that she gave that to me to help put me at ease, just as she would when I'd have nightmares. I strongly felt back in that moment finding it that she didn't want me to be angry and out uselessly seeking vengeance. It's hard to word correctly but it was like a direct emotional conveyance or something, a feeling I don't think I would have reached alone. This happened back when I was in high school. Move to new city for dad's new job. Move into older two-story home. Everything's fine for a couple of week, house seems pretty normal. One summer night I was laying in my room and felt this really odd feeling, like something bad was about to happen. I sat there for a while and tried to ignore it and go to sleep. Hear weird groaning sound. Sounds like screaming almost. Gets louder to the point where it starts to hurt my ears, sound like multiple people screaming frantically. It stops, nothing but silence and laying in a pitch black room. I hear someone coming down the hall and my mom pones the door to ask if I was playing any music or video games, because the screaming woke her and my dad up. It woke up my little brother too. I said I didn't and had no idea what it was or where it came from, sounded like from everywhere if that makes sense. I freaked us all out and after a couple of days my mom asked my neighbors what was the history of the house. It was built in the 50s but a fire killed a family that was living in it. The house wasn't too damaged and was rebuilt. Here's the fucked up part. About one year afterwards. I fell asleep and was woke up at 3 o'clock by a weird sounding laugh. I looked around in the dark to see what looked like a silhouette of a woman. The image gets clearer and it looks like a woman in charred 1950s clothing, nope. I see her face and it looks burned and skull-like, while the other half was almost fine. She screamed and flew at me. I freaked out and ran from my room. My parents woke up and had heard the scream also. We moved out and into a cheap apartment while we were selling the house. We eventually moved out and have a new place. We sold it to some young couple out of Boston, they've had no issues apparently. <laughs>